Alright, we're going on to the next round of punishment. We're going to do bent over dumbbell rows. And I'm going to do some bent over head supported uh, dumbbell flies, reverse flies. Boosting its capabilities without altering the exterior look. This demonstrated Farm Truck's keen engineering eye and ability to extract maximum performance from even the most humble starting points. But Farm Truck's talents didn't stay hidden in the garage for long. Word of his talents soon spread, and it wasn't long before he caught the eye of the producers behind the hit reality TV series, Street Outlaws. This show was all about the underground world of street racing, where crews would compete to have the fastest modified cars. How did his journey there span out? Let's find out. Farm Truck's journey with the Street Outlaws. The Street Outlaws producers invited Farm Truck to join the show. They knew his crazy car builds and wild racing style would be perfect for entertaining the viewers. This was Farm Truck's chance to show his skills on a much bigger stage, so, as would any of us if we were in his shoes, Farm Truck accepted the invitation. When Street Outlaws premiered on TV in 2013, Farm Truck was there, ready to stir things up. He showed up in his dad's old truck, a vehicle many people probably dismissed, unknown to them that he had worked his magic on it, turning it into a high-powered racer. To everyone's surprise, in the course of the race, Farm truck and his modified truck beat all the other racers, even the ones with fancy modern sports cars, and emerged winners in most tournaments. His ability to take a regular old vehicle and transform it into a thoroughbred supercar earned him a lot of attention and respect in the street racing world. And that was how he was launched into the limelight. For the record, the Street Outlaw show is a strictly street race show. Oh. Street racing might sound like a thrilling idea. But the truth is, it's extremely dangerous and a whole different ball game compared to the kind of racing you see on actual race tracks. This is because instead of a proper circuit's control in the regular yeah, gonna... environment, these street racers keep take on going. Powered rides out onto well, keep going. Up, I got to be doing of unpredictable obstacles in their way. Pedestrians, oncoming traffic, stop signs. Started out with uh, uh, seventy at the insane speed of racing. It's a miracle and, uh, that can even maintain control. Fifteens on the flies. Let alone the board of I'm gonna go up to eighty on the second set. So you can only imagine how intense such a go can be. Up to twenty signs from being a street on flies. Race, the street outlaws was a no prep show, which means that competitors didn't get any preparations before hitting the road. They straight up go for the steering and go with the flow of the thrill or adrenaline rush. And because of how dangerous it can get. Many of the contestants have lost their lives while in action. Now, this was a very dangerous venture that was enough to get one jewelry even before the start of the race, as anything could go wrong in the twinkling of the night. But Farm Truck and his buddy decided to use a different approach to it. To them, if it's not fun doing them, it's not worth doing. And so, even with the tension that is associated with the competition, Farm Truck and AZM made sure to always infuse a healthy dose of levity and playfulness to the already tensed up game. And they were able to do that by balancing the intensity of the races with their hilarious back and forth banter and antics, which created an engaging viewing experience where the audience couldn't help but get immersed in their infectious enthusiasm while also cheering them on. This had proven to work over time, but on one occasion, he too became a victim of the dark side of the street race in a race they participated in in Australia. Let's find out what happened. The Australian racing accident and the beginning of his woes. Farm Truck and his friend Asian are already known for their antics on the hit show Street Outlaws, where they love to go fishing for high state competition on the streets of OKC with their famous Chevy pickup. But in 2017, they decided to take their act international and headed to Australia to witness one of the biggest car events, Summer Nats. The Summer Nats is famous for its burnout contest. What this means is that every contestant is to create the biggest, baddest clouds of tire smoke possible. And the one with the thickest smoke will be cheered by the crowd. The heavier the smoke, the louder the cheers and the higher the scores. 
This is not your regular racer. After watching some of these wild burnout beasts, Farm Truck and AZM knew they had to get in on the action themselves. Working with the Canberra Institute of Technology students, they took another C-10 truck, made it look just like their own back home, and transformed it into an LS-powered supercharged burnout machine. With Farm Truck behind the wheel of their new creation, it was showtime. As soon as the signal was given, he mashed the loud pedal, and the engine roared to life, sending up huge clouds of smoke. But then things quickly took an unexpected turn, because after some initial light contact with the wall, Farm Truck turned the truck around for another pass, only to hit the wall a bit harder this time. And that was how a race they had not started came to an abrupt end without them showing the people of Australia what they'd done. Though the truck was badly damaged, he and his partner, Asian, weren't injured, so that didn't as much brush his desire for speed racing, so after that, he continued to participate in other races. But who would have thought that he pulled this feat amidst a health challenge? Surprising, right? Four. Let's find out about this health challenge. Fat boy trying to... fan of farm truck and a keen observer, you'll notice that a sign of his face is shit smoke. off, man. In 2011, he was diagnosed with a condition called Bell's palsy. A condition that can suddenly cause one side of the face to become weak or paralyzed, making it difficult to close an eye or make facial expressions. The severity of Bell's palsy can vary a lot between people from mild to extremely severe. Some folks might experience only mild facial muscle weakness, while others end up with total paralysis on one side of their face. It's quite a sad sight, with the affected side of the face just drooping down. And the onset is usually sudden, with the symptoms reaching their peak within just a couple of days. Now, zips. the specific symptoms can vary. I got some zips. Some common ones we'll try to get eight reps. Difficulty making facial expressions. That's and why I stayed with eight on the first set. I wanted to do eight speech. reps. There might also be pain around the jaw. Throughout this whole set. While growing. And so on. Uh, and in rare cases, the, the way to, on both sides of the face can be uh, same thing with the bent over uh, flies. Trying to stay in that 12 rep range. Uh, if I can, I'm jumping up to 25 next time. We'll see how it goes. I don't want to be doing a lot of flailing and cheating, you know what I mean? Uh, I just want to do good reps, you know, keep it, keep it nice. The regrowth won't be quite right leading to some involuntary muscle contractions. A condition 86 degrees in here. That's in here. Complication With, when the I got a fan going in there. I got a fan going in my, my shop room. And, and I got a little piece of crap fan. It's wild to think that even big going up there and TV stuff just to blow some air around here. I mean, it makes it feel good. Speaking of notable I'm not complaining. Did you hear about this, it's way better than being in a damn commercial gym. I ain't got nobody fighting for me my damn equipment, my equipment, my own stuff. Now Ken, my buddy Ken, Ken Camden, brings, he bought that stuff at the gym, he bought some kettlebells at the gym, stuff like that. He's welcome anytime he wants to come over here. And he knows that. Um, but let's get this next set done. Even Pierce Brosnan was not spared. Before he ever became the dashing James Bond we all know and love today, Brosnan also suffered this condition. Not stopping there, Empire star Terence Howard also developed the condition back when he was still in high school. In his case, the disease left the right side of his face completely paralyzed. Desperate for a cure, Instead of working closely with doctors, he resorted to shocking his face with the wire of his dad's electric razor every single day for five months until he started regaining sensation. Luckily, the standard medical treatments for Bell's palsy these days are much safer and more effective. Doctors usually prescribe high doses of corticosteroid drugs for about a week, and for people with really severe facial paralysis, they might also use antiviral medications or even consider surgery in some cases. Though he didn't outrightly tell us the method of treatment that was administered to him, 
He did come out of it, but sadly, never fully really recovered from the effect of the disease, which is obvious on the right side of his face, and with the way he has issues with coordinating his right hand. But of course, as we would expect, he didn't let that deter him, because even with this challenge, he could participate in street races as if nothing ever happened. As devastating as his encounter with Ben's palsy was, it was nothing compared to the tragedy that literally snapped him away from the public eyes. Before we get to that, let's look into the ah, weather. Again, if you have an eye for details, you'll notice that Farm Truck often avoids using his right hand for handshakes and instead opts for his left hand. Fans were curious to know why the sudden switch from the right hand they knew him for and why he was exhibiting a limited range of motion in that hand. So they started to dig, and their finding was a bit sad. Eager to uncover the truth, Street Outlaw's viewers flocked to Reddit, speculating on the reason behind Farm Truck's unique greeting. They traced the action to an incident that happened in 2022. On that day, Farm Truck suffered a severe injury to his right hand while trying to change a car's tire. Though the details of the incident remain unknown, as the exact footage seems to have been erased from the internet, glimpses of Farm Truck's damaged finger can be seen in some behind-the-scenes YouTube videos, where the injury left his fingers pretty messed up. While some speculated that the finger condition was due to the bell's palsy he had suffered, some speculated that the traumatic experience of the tire accident had left him shaken, making him hesitant to risk the damage to his hand, resulting in the use of his left hand. And guess what? They were right because in a response to the online discussions, AZN admitted that Farm Truck's hesitation to use his right Progressive hand overload. was indeed due to I the hope this effects of the previous I'm not too smart. But even that setback didn't diminish that, uh, his spirit and passion for racing. Instead, he was able to adapt to it, still participate in oh. races, and one more set. smashed every one of them. He had not fully recovered from the finger injury PTSD when, just at the peak of his career, he suffered a devastating blow one that forced him out of the public's eye since then. He got kicked out of the Street Outlaws show. He came out of other challenges, but would he survive being kicked out of a show he built his entire career around? This is the twist we never expected, so let's find out what really happened. End of Farm Truck's journey with the Street Outlaws and the beginning of a new chapter. After a very long time, fans noticed that Farm Truck was slowly becoming scarce on the Street Outlaws show. For someone who had made the show his home, what a it was strange so they probed to know the reason for his sudden disappearance. That was when he opened up about what happened. In a YouTube video, Farm Truck, a fellow racing weirdo, Asian, it's my about why they haven't been go to the race as much lately. And the reason they gave was a little bit. So apparently the contestants had started smack. to get tired of Farm Truck and Asian's trip workouts was too slow and heavy to compete. By this time, he had started to lose some races. Just a little bit. For them, why compete with a contestant you already know would be in the contest? They saw no thrill in such competition, and so they decided it was time for the two to exit. That's cool water. Which is quite understandable. Purified drinking water. Sportsman's angle. It was a subtle way of saying we've outgrown you. So you either upgrade and stay or maintain it and leave. And leave, did they? Others probably would have found a way to conform to the norms, but Farm Truck and AZN were not conformists. Their passion was building unique, unconventional vehicles that can still outrun those flashy supercars. So, they left without raising the dust or making a great deal of it. But you know what? Instead of brooding over what happened, they devised a genuine idea start their own racing program. To comfortably do racing the way they wanted it, Farm Truck and his friend came together to air a spin-off of the original series that launched them into the limelight, and fans were really excited to see what would happen. From the information gathered, the Farm Truck and AZN spin-off took a different approach compared to the original Street Outlaws. Rather than uh, here we go. On the entire cast of racers in Oklahoma City, this show really centered on the dynamic duo of Farm Truck and AZN giving viewers an even closer look at their unique personalities, crazy builds, and adventures. 
at least that they were restricted from going to the other group. They now had the opportunity to do so with reckless abandon. On all fronts, this spin-off was different from the main show. First off, instead of Oklahoma as usual, it took Farm Truck and AZN to Australia. At this point, it's apparent that their last visit to Australia, aside from the accident that happened, left a lasting imprint in their minds, and in a way, opened a new hunger in them. Considering the freedom and mode of operation of their racing, they felt that it was the right place to show the world what they had been working on. And boy, did they go all out for the spin-off. Working with the talented team at Lux Race Cars, Farm Truck, and AZM, they were able to come up with wild, crazy, and unique creations that had never been seen before in the history of racing. One of the wild girls they worked on was an air cannon car. to use that powerful blast of air to launch the car forward during races. It was such a wild and unconventional idea, exactly uh. the kind of thing you'd expect from Farm Truck and AZM. But these racing beasts didn't stop there. They also went ahead to modify a vehicle to compete in a drag race against a Zamboni machine. For those who don't know, a Zamboni is the machine they use to smooth out the ice at ice skating rinks. Somehow, Farm truck and AZN modified a car to go head to head with a Zamboni in a drag race. These kinds of wild oh. have been done before Bill was really a lot. part of what made the farm truck and AZN spin-off show so unique and entertaining. The guys really pushed the boundaries of what was possible. They weren't afraid to get creative and try things that had never been done before. Their idea was perfect, their zeal strong, but soon they would face a series of challenges. First off, they had to adapt to a whole new racing scene. Australia is an entirely different ballgame compared to the familiar tracks and competitors back home in Oklahoma. Farm Truck and AZM had to get involved with the local racing regulations, driving cars, and even the slang and terminology used by the Aussie racers. And speaking of local culture, they also had to overcome some language and cultural barriers. Communicating effectively with the Australian racing community and understanding the nuances of their auto scene 